from the Strait of Hormuz up to about 200 miles inside the Gulf. Between September and March each year, colder water from the Oman side flows into the Gulf. And this water is less saline, more fertile than the normal Arabian Gulf water. The current then runs firmly into the Gulf and carries large shoals of surface swimming fish, which are easy to catch. At one season or another, the Gulf abounds with tuna, crayfish, bream, rock cod, and large hauls of Spanish mackerel and sardines. This makes the fishing industry an important element in the economy of the region. In fact, in some communities of the Emirates' northeastern coast, more than one quarter of the whole working population is engaged in fishing. And some 9,000 people are employed in fishing throughout the Gulf Coast generally. Over a thousand boats caught well over 60,000 tons of fish last year in the Emirates alone. Dawn comes picturesquely to the Gulf Coast. Our fishermen made a very successful haul last night but there will still be quite a few fish left among the nets, and these will be gathered in as the nets are taken down. But as the men move in, they find that sharks have swum into their nets. Sharks frequently visit gulf waters and are one of the dangers which pearl divers face in deeper waters from time to time. But our fishermen can handle these intruders without too much difficulty. Indeed, the fishermen of this region are skilled sharkers and sail out to catch the sharks with nets a few miles off the coast. Then they cut off their tails and fins and dry them in the sun. Afterwards, the dried parts are exported to Southeast Asia and used in the manufacture of medicines. Once they've removed the sharks, our fishermen can get on with taking in their nets and bringing in the last of their catch. Every fish is valuable, a contribution to their standard of living. Nothing is wasted. Whatever they don't eat themselves is sold to merchants. The merchants then sell it in land, either fresh for human consumption or sun-dried, after which it may be exported as food or fertilizer, and sometimes even as fodder for camels when their natural grazing is insufficient. of fish are now unloaded into their boats and the men will then be sailing off back to their home base. There will still be plenty to do, sorting the fish direct for market or for drying. But it's been a successful trip and the men are satisfied. is a hard-working and proud life, but it's a way of life that is dying out. Gulf fishermen like these are highly skilled in their traditional fishing techniques, but their skills are now outdated in a world where large-scale operations and mechanized techniques are essential for modern commercial needs.
The fishing industry, not only in the Gulf, but all over the world, has to be modernized to be really profitable. There's not enough revenue to be obtained from the old methods any longer. Fish processing and freezing operations are necessary to meet growing world demands. And this requires the provision of much new capital for ice factories, cold storage, and other costly facilities. The same applies to boats, for they can no longer depend on human rowing power or the vagaries of gulf winds and breezes. More and more boats with diesel engines are taking over from the traditional shashas and shahufas, furis and bagalas, and outboard engines are being attached to existing smaller boats. In the past, the poverty of the people meant insufficient funds to enable modernization to take place. But now the growing resources and funds of the Gulf states are making it possible for modern developments to go ahead. The authorities have set up departments to investigate and promote schemes for that purpose. Loans and grants, for example, to help fishermen to obtain small diesels, and funds for the development of the fishing industry generally, including modern facilities for drying fish for fish meal and vitally needed fertilizer. <laughs> Expert studies indicate that there is a really great potential for developing the fisheries of the United Arab Emirates. There is also more interest in planning and efficient control, such as the specification of fish that is permitted to be caught, the type, the size, the quantity, the fishing areas and seasons. economic benefits to the people and to the fishermen themselves. But it must be faced that age-old methods like these will gradually disappear, as they have done in other parts of the world. It's perhaps a sad but inevitable fact that the sun is going down on this traditional way of life. <laughs> 